started tonight, I'd like to thank the Pay Commission, Barry Lynn, for taping these programs and making them available to the public. Much appreciated. Thank you, Barry. With that, we're going to call a meeting in the order. If you're able, please stand for the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please take your roll. an opportunity for citizens to comment on agenda-related items. Are there any citizens that would like to comment on agenda-related items tonight? Please come to the podium. State your name and address, please. Hello, my name is Josh Covert. I'm an attorney. I work with Meds Cafe. I spoke at the last city council meeting in regards to Ordinance 2007. I also had a chance to speak today with the city manager, and he informed me that there may be a work group coming up in the next couple days that would discuss adding additional licenses, retail establishment licenses, and that's something we fully support on behalf of Meds Cafe. We expressed our concerns last time about Ordinance 2007, and that by allowing the other applicants time <clears throat> to finish the build out is actually setting us behind, and we have been ready to go. Um, so I applaud the City Council for taking that step in the City, and I would look forward to an ordinance being created that would allow the existing medical facilities to also have a retail establishment license. That way we can start generating tax revenue for the City really quick. Um, we're expecting the medical retail establishment, or the provisioning center, to be up and running um, within the next month or so. And within a few weeks, with the City's approval, we would be able to have a retail establishment from the state and start generating tax revenue. So just wanted to bring that all up again. And again, I applaud the City Council for taking that step and looking into the possibility of adding additional retail licenses. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anybody else? Ryan Fitzsimmons, 209 St. Mary's Parkway, uh, 70 Arthur Street, Defense Cafe, and uh, 170 Glotcheski, which will be uh, Victorian Reserves uh, in the future. Um, I hope everyone was able to uh, get the letter that we put together to um, more fully inform um, the, the council um, and city staff of uh, our intentions um, in, in the city as far as our investments with uh, those business goes, or as far as the business goes, businesses. Um, I wasn't able to attend the, the work session and actually by the time um, I realized it was public and, and that we could attend here at the, the Ramsdale, I, I couldn't fit into my schedule. So I wanted to make myself available tonight uh, if anybody had any questions or just um, you know, uh, any concerns or things like that that, um, that I could address um, or any answers um, that I could provide uh, on the letter or the content of the, the letter. Um, and we'll be available all night. Um, my partner, Michael Atkins, is here um, as well. Um, and then obviously our attorney, uh, Josh Colbert, just, just spoke. But uh, I really appreciate it, um, uh, the open-mindedness, and um, potentially giving us the opportunity to, to bring business and uh, tax dollars to uh, the city that I really care about. So thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah, thanks, guys. Is there anyone else? Seeing none, we'll move on to the consent agenda. All items marked with an asterisk are on the consent agenda and considered by the city manager to be routine matters. Prior to the approval of the consent agenda, any member of council may have an item from the consent agenda removed and taken up during the regular portion of the meeting. 
Tonight, consent agenda items include approval of minutes, payroll, invoice, consideration of ordinance 20-07 to extend the duration of a provisional permit granted under chapter 866 and a provisional license under chapter 867 of the City of Manistee, Michigan Court of Fine Ordinances. Consideration of ordinance 20-08 to amend ordinance 19-03 of the City of Manistee Ordinances to provide for a change to section 1.09 of ordinances 19-03 regarding the duration of an ordinance to provide for the effective date and to repeal an ordinance, all ordinances in com conflict herewith. Notification regarding next work session in consideration of Munson Healthcare Manistee Hospital to hold a paint the town paint Bowls event only. Is there a motion? I'll make that motion. A second. There's a motion and a second. Any discussion? Any other comments? Hearing none, please take the roll. Councilmember Cooper? Yes. Councilmember Beaton? Yes. Mayor Kalinsky? Yes. Councilmember Sipset? Yes. Councilmember Shemansky? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Krabowski? Yes. Councilmember Martin Pontiac. Yes. Motion approved. Thank you. Consideration designate, designating a voting delegate for the Michigan Municipal League annual meeting. The annual convention of the Michigan Municipal League will be held as an online virtual conference September 29th through October 2nd, 2020. Pursuant to this provision of the League bylaws, we are requested to designate by action of the governing body, one official who will be in attendance at the convention, convention as an official representative to cast a vote of the city, for the city of Manistee at the annual meeting, and if possible, to designate one other official to serve as an alternate. At this time, council can take action to appoint a voting delegate and an alternate to the Michigan Municipal Annual Convention. Is there anybody that's going to be attending the convention? I registered. Sure. I'm sorry? I've already registered for the convention, so I'm, I'm just saying I've registered. Is there a motion for Council Member Beaton to be the motion, delegate? Motion. To refer to be a delegate. Is there a second? I'll second. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Please take the roll. Councilmember Cooper? Yes. Councilmember Beaton? Yes. Mayor Zielinski? Yes. Councilmember Sipset? Yes. Councilmember Shemansky? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Grabowski? Yes. Councilmember Martin Pontiac? Yes. Motion approved. Now, is there anyone interested in being an alternate? You need to be an alternate? I'm sorry? You want to be an alternate? Who wants to be an alternate? Yeah, who wants to be an alternate? Well, don't you have to attend though? I'm sorry? Is anybody else going? I can't hear you. It's, it's Is anybody else going? It's virtual. Oh, right. It's, it's virtual. virtual. It's easy to go to. Well, I, I know, but is anybody else attending on? I, I, I will, I plan to, to be online virtually for the convention. I will act okay. as an alternate. Okay, then I make a motion for um, Zelensky to be an alternate. Is there a second? I'll, I'll second. second. Any discussion? Please take the roll. Councilmember Cooper? Yes. Councilmember Beaton? Yes. Mayor Zielinski? Yes. Councilmember Sipsek? Yes. Councilmember Shemansky? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Grabowski? Yes. Councilmember Martin Pontiac? Yes. Motion approved. Thank you. Consideration of a two-year contract extension with Huron Tackle Company. Huron Tackle Company has been contracted to remove fish waste from the First Street Beach fish cleaning station for many years. The latest two-year agreement expired on July 18, 2019. The agreement allows for two year for two two-year extensions. Huron Tackle Company has requested a two-year extension effective July 19, 2019 through July 19, 2021. At this time, council could take action to approve a two-year 
contract extension with Hero Tackle Company to remove fish waste from First Street Beach. Is there a motion? Motion. I'll second, Grubuski. I have a, a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? Yes, I have a few questions. I don't, I, I haven't been fishing in years and I don't use the fish cleaning station. How has the service been? Can anybody give me some feedback? Maybe somebody from the DPW? Jeff. We've got a very, uh, a very good agreement with Huron Tackle. They place a staff member there every day, uh, usually during from June till September. Uh, that person will check the bathrooms and just make sure they're in good shape. If there's any issues, they can contact us. But he also sprays down all the tables and has been very friendly with all the fisher fishermen. Um, what we actually pay them for is to remove the frozen waste and we've not had an issue with that whatsoever. Um, that fish waste, I believe, is taken and processed to make cat food. And uh, since the city has been contracting with them, they've extended similar agreements with Lunnington, uh, Frankfurt, Arcadia, uh, places all around us. Um, and they kind of Manistee is the central location for them. Uh, so it's been very good. It benefits the fishermen, it benefits the city, and it takes that waste stream uh, that we cannot put in a landfill and puts it to uh, another use. There's been no increase in cost. I believe it's the same, isn't it? Correct. Any other? Thanks, Jeff. Mm -hmm. Anything else? Hearing none, please take the roll. Councilmember Cooper? Yes. Councilmember Beaton? Yes. Mayor Zelensky? Yes. Councilmember Sipsek? Yes. Councilmember Shemansky? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Grabowski? Yes. Councilmember Martin Pontiac? Yes. Motion approved. Thank you. Consideration of purchasing pickup trucks for the Department of Public Works. <coughs> Excuse me. The motor pool budget includes replacing two DPW pickup trucks. A quote was received from Grodal Ford through the, their Michigan deal contract. The quote is priced at $31,680 for each. Total requested purchase is $63,360. At this time, council could take action to approve the purchase of two F-250 pickup trucks from Nordal Ford for the total delivery price of $63,360. Is there a motion? I'll make that motion. Is there a second? I'll second. I have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? I, I've got a, a couple of questions. Um, what was the, the uh, budgeted uh, amount in the in the budget for the two trucks. Do you remember that? I think I put it in my memo. Yeah, it was slightly less than that. I don't. I don't it was slightly slightly less than that. I, I think it was in the memo that it's I. It's not sixty-one thousand. Mm -hmm. What was it? Sixty-one thousand. So the and the issue is that. The price of the trucks have gone up, obviously. Um, the two trucks that we're looking at are actually stock trucks that Gorno had ordered ahead of the shutdown. Um, we had a truck that was approved by council last year that still has not been built. Um, once the, the automakers shut down and then started back up and the demand has been tremendous, so they actually have uh, one of those stock trucks that's on the lot right now and it costs a little bit more. It's got a couple extra guards underneath the transmission and in the engine uh, that we had chose not to order but they're on there and there's a little bit of benefit for it so that, that's the reason why those are more. And are we going to uh, be getting rid of any trucks? Are these going to be replacements? And they, are, they are replacements. Yeah, they are replacements. Um, the one that we had budgeted for last year that we should be taking delivery this month 
we actually, the truck it replaces, blew its engine um, early in the summer, early, late in the spring. And then one of the trucks to be replaced with these two also is having engine issues. So we're, we're using these things up to the very end of them. But yeah, we will, um, we've got a, the Ford Escape, we've got a dump truck, we'll now have three pick, four, pick, four trucks and uh, a police cruiser that will all be auctioned off. So if you have one that's coming from the last, from last year you said, mm -hmm. then can't you just purchase one right now instead of two? Uh, not with the conditions of the trucks that they're replacing. So we put the replacement of all, all the fleet, uh, we've spaced them out um, and stretched them out to the, beyond what their recommended lives are to be able to smooth out the expenditures of the motor pool. So the truck that was ordered last year was scheduled to be replaced actually before that. And then the two trucks this year are for different trucks that are scheduled to be replaced also. So we want to keep up that, that pace of spacing as well. We've I'm, got I'm about confused. So if you're replacing the one from last year and then you have one that has engine trouble, you only need two, not three. Well, but one of the other ones is, is ready to be replaced as well. My point is that we are not getting a lot of value out of these trucks once we replace them, the, the ones that they're being replaced, um, because we're using up their, the life of them. Um, and we've got about 20 of those trucks throughout the public works, and so we're trying to get 14 to 16, 17 years out of them. Uh, but that just doing the math, you almost have to replace one to two every year to keep up with that. And if you don't replace them, they start costing a lot of maintenance to keep them on the road, right? Uh, tremendous amounts, yes. So how many trucks do you have now? Is it 20? Uh, it's close to that, yeah. The pickups. Spread between the water department, the sewer department, the sewer department, treatment plant, parks department, and then the street department. What if you only, I know the quote has two, what if you only got one though? Does that mess everything up? Um, it takes it off the, the schedule that we've got planned out. So then that, that pushes another purchase into next year or the year after that, which is also added on to the year, to that year's program purchases. And then um, it kind of creates bubbles in our expenditures in the motor pool. So when we sit down and look at um, all the public works equipment and vehicles, all the police needs, all the fire department needs. We're trying to spread those out to get as much of the life out of the vehicles as we can, but also trying to spread out those costs so that we don't have huge demands on cash one year and then you know, less than the, ne the next year. So uh, we also purchased a plow truck last year. This year we don't have a plow truck that we're purchasing. So it kind of balances those out. And I believe you've got a police cruiser this year, right? We did. And then um, also a new ambulance. How much are you looking to get from the vehicles that you're going to sell? We haven't set a target on those, but we've been, the last ones that we sold, they're probably fifteen to $2,000. Um, once they blow the engines, the value goes down substantially, though. Okay. I, I just got one quick question because the whole APDW thing is to me mm -hmm. okay so if you purchase two trucks and say the police department needs a new car that's coming out of the same is that coming out of the same budget yeah so the way the motor pool operates is the motor pool has a cash reserve in it and all of our equipment purchases are made from the motor pool fund and then each department in their annual budgets pays into the motor pool to keep it replenished and um, Ed and I work every year to update um, you know, the condition of each piece of equipment and then we talk with the police and fire so we evaluate the condition of them. There's times where we've got a, a vehicle that's ready to be replaced on the schedule but it's running good, we haven't had any maintenance issues with it, we'll push it as far as we can. Um, the trucks that we're requesting tonight and the one from last year, they're, they definitely need to be replaced. Okay. Um, I'm not trying to be a pain. I'm just trying to understand yeah. this. Like, if you get three trucks 
and next week the police department or the fire department needs something and we don't have it because you've got three new trucks. That's <coughs> what I'm trying to... Right. Like, I think that you should be okay for right now with the one that was previously ordered replacing the one that it needs to replace and then a new one replacing the one that has engine trouble and then just using that other one until it completely dies out right. in case they need something. But understanding that, that all of those vehicles are used on a daily basis. They're all used. Um, each department uh, pays in through their operating budget to the motor pool, and then we have a motor pool committee that looks at the needs, the scheduled replacements, the cost of those, and we update those. Um, we, Ed's got a very robust spreadsheet that we track, not just what today's cost is, but we forecast out what the future cost is, and then we look at the trending of how much money is coming in from the departments versus the, you know, the outlays and try to make sure we don't run uh, any deficits on that. Um, when we have e equipment or vehicle issues during the year, all of our, our, all of our budgets also have maintenance um, allocations. So I've got, um, I've got money to repair those trucks on a, during the year and to do the maintenance on them. Um, however, if we do have a failure where, where the vehicle is totaled or, or undrivable because like an engine blows, we have to park it and then we've got to use something else. Right now, uh, because I've got trucks that are down, we just replaced our one ton dump truck, which is a big pickup truck with a big dump body on it. But I've kept the one that we were going to replace in service until we can get these new trucks. Because we just don't have enough to, to you know, for all the guys. Um, and it was a little bit more challenging during the COVID because we were trying for a long time, trying to keep one person to a truck. And we, since we've all come back together, we've had to do two people in a truck, but we require the both of them to wear masks now while they're together. But do you need one person in a truck? Like if you're going around hauling up brush, wouldn't you have two people in a truck versus two trucks following each other? Like, I'm just trying to understand it. As a safety precaution, we did that for, uh, through the spring. We try to keep everybody separated as much as possible for, for health reasons. From a work efficiency, no, we want to put as many people in there as we can. Okay. That, that's my only concern is that you get three new trucks and if they need something, then there's not the money there. And the, the plow system that they're putting on there, will you, those trucks, can you take that off? Or? We, the plows we can. Uh, but there's a frame that attaches to the, some, some of the pickup trucks, and that's specific to that model year. So um, that costs us extra. We put those on usually with, with our operating budgets, but the plows itself we reuse year to year. Oh, no, that's what I meant was if if they have if they come with a plow thing on them, you still use those trucks. You just take the I don't know anything about trucks. You just take the plow off and use the truck for right now because oh yeah absolutely. Okay. So you don't necessarily need to put the plow system on there if you're using right. other parts. These trucks do not have the plow system on there. Oh, okay, then I'm reading this differently then. Yeah. Okay. That was an option that they listed. Okay. We didn't, we're not purchasing that. Okay. I think I've done that. Okay. Hey Jeff, you said that you have usually one person in the truck. The other day I was following on Maple Street. There were four trucks going the same way. They all turned to Page Street. And I didn't follow them to see where they were going. But I thought some of them had two, women, two people, some of one person. So, yeah, if it's, I don't know, I couldn't tell you what, what that group of employees were doing, but um, if it's our weed whipping crew, there's, you know, four to six of those summer employees that will go to a park or to a specific area. Um, obviously, you can't put them all in, a, in one truck. Did we ever get a list of all the trucks that, and that, that we have at the city branch? Yeah, we maintain a list. Do I mean, we ever get a list? I think you were, you were asked last year or something to give us a list. Uh, we can provide one. That's easy okay. to do. That'd be good. I think I would be better if I had when you when you want to make a purchase like this, I, and I wish I had something like it to show us the inventory that you have and the condition of everything. And it would kind of be tracking it so we could see better um, the justification for the purchases. I know it's in the budget. Um, but you know what happens during budget time, everything gets crunched, you know, when, when you're talking about things. 
Uh, I'm just wondering, um, don't we have a dump truck? Do we have a dump truck? We have 10 dump trucks. You have 10 dump trucks, okay. Um, we have 10 dump trucks, two of them are salters, so technically eight, I guess. Two of them are what? Salt. salt. Two of them are salt, salt trucks. Oh, salt trucks, okay. okay. And those are all used for hauling materials during the summer and then snow plowing. Those are our snow plow trucks in the winter. Yeah, I just would prefer if I had to look at it. Do you have any more purchases that you're going to make this year in this budget year as far as moving vehicles? Of any we, kind? we have um, one more truck actually, but it's got a service body on it and it um, and also holds our crane for pulling pumps out at our pump stations. Um, we've been trying to get that truck replaced for several years and use the service body is good on it, but the GMC chassis and and uh, and drivetrain are are old and and wearing out. So we've been trying to figure out a, a cheaper method of doing it. And the service body that we have in the crane setup will fit on any of the new chassis. So we've got that approved in our budget as well this year. We're just getting the stuff priced out right now. Okay, I got another question. So. Once again, with the trucks, if you get the two trucks, the one from last year, one this year, can't you take the money from the second truck and use it for the full truck? So then you're not coming back and saying, oh, well, that's, you know, that cost us more than what we thought. Every vehicle that we dispose of, whatever money we get for that, whether it's through private sale, auction, whatever, the money goes back in to replenish the motor pool fund. Okay. That money goes right back into the motor pool fund. Okay, but you're still short, right? Because this is the estimate to buy these two trucks is more than what we budgeted. Yeah, they're what about a thousand dollars more yeah. each? Okay. And if you have summer help, so you're putting them all in a truck separately, you don't have that much help in the winter time. So not all these trucks are running. During the winter time, right? Okay. Yeah, they wouldn't all be on the road at the same time. So technically, you can still get away with two trucks because it's coming into fall right now. If I could, I think one of the issues here that Jeff hit on it earlier was that the truck that he ordered last fiscal year has not been built. And they don't know when it's going to be built. And I don't think we're in a position where we can take that risk of holding off purchase not knowing when any truck is going to be built and, and Jeff was able to find two that were on the lot that meet our needs that we can put in right now. Well, I guess where I'm confused is if, it, if you already budgeted last year for that truck that money should be there so you should use that money to buy two new trucks and only one truck out of this. Am I confused? The, the need is for three trucks. Right, but one's not even built yet, so you don't know when you're going to get it. We do. It's on the lot. Okay, so all, then... <laughs> all three of these trucks were pre-ordered as stock municipal vehicles by Goral Ford. Okay. Anticipating that, that all of the health issues that were starting to creep around the world were going to create an issue. They did a private order and ordered a variety of colors, but these are all the same vehicles that all the cities typically purchase. Okay. So they kind of went out on a ledge. When we ordered our truck, it didn't get entered in, so it, it didn't get entered in until after the shutdown occurred. So ours is way behind being, being able to be built. So these trucks have a little bit more on them, but it's actually better for us if they've got bed liners on them. I may not have ordered a bed liner. Um, and that's what the difference in the price is. But the need for that fleet is still three pickup trucks right now. So Even if we're coming into fall and you don't have as many employees. Right. I'm just trying to figure out a way where you can get well, around having two trucks right now. Yeah, even if I didn't buy these trucks but, but you approved them and I ordered them, I may not have them until next spring or summer. Our plow trucks, when we order our plow trucks, they're... Uh, eight but then you're going to come back and want four trucks out of, you know, last year, two this year, two next year, you know what I mean? So it's just going to keep piling up. So. The, the old trucks keep getting used, they keep getting in worse shape, they keep failing, 
that they're not getting any newer, so we're trying to get caught up on these purchases. Okay. I'm just trying to figure out a way where everybody can have money if they need it, like not spend it all on three trucks right at once. Can, can I speak to that a little bit? Because yeah. I think there's some confusion perhaps. So there's plenty of money to buy everything. Everything that was approved by city council in the budget for motor pool, there's money for that. This isn't squeezing out other purchases or anything like that. That's what this 10 year rolling motor pool plan does is it schedules out all the purchases and the estimated costs and all the rental income and the estimated costs. And the fleet right now is optimized for what the departments need. So these replacements, when they come in, you know, they, it's all been scheduled out and there's a plan for that. So just because we're buying two of them right now, there's two trucks that are in this current fiscal year budget. It doesn't make any difference to the city when we buy those in the budget. And if there's an opportunity to get them now, they're already budgeted for. You know, so so if they come next month to a meeting and say they need a car or an ambulance or a fire truck or whatever, there's money for that. Well, we would finance the ambulance, so that was the part of the plan in the motor pool budget. If it's a if it's a patrol car, we would pay for that in cash. Okay. So that's that's how it's all planned out. So this is the the point is it's not squeezing out any other any other purchases that are budgeted. Now, if uh, if the ladder truck uh, got in a bad accident and got totaled, different issue, right? That's an unplanned thing. You'd get insurance money. You'd have to figure out what was going on. But for cars that are planned out, there's ample resources to pay for those. And whether you buy them at the beginning of the fiscal year, middle of the fiscal year, or end of the fiscal year is dependent on the needs of the departments. And with the trucks that have blown up, the, the pickup trucks to keep the fleet at the proper size need, need to be purchased. Okay. Didn't we have, when we were doing the budget though, didn't we have to kind of be conservative because of we didn't know what the COVID was gonna do and what kind of funding we were gonna get from the state? When, when our budget was prepared, COVID, it was already done when COVID had started. So we're, we are watching that, we're, we're concerned about that. But the motor pool is kind of a revolving fund and those, those we're not reducing the rental payments. If anything, we're increasing rental payments to help make that more sustainable. So it's almost kind of its own separate little budget over here. Um, and in order to operate the city efficiently, efficiently, you've got to have the vehicles, that's the tools that the guys use to do their job. So that's why we plan that out meticulously. So for other things in the budget, we might have to treat differently. Well, that, that's the potential, you know, again, we're, we're still, although I did see um, the last estimate was that the state was going to run a $3 billion deficit this coming fiscal year. Now it's down to 1.5. So it's a moving target. Uh, we'll, we'll see where things are, but we're, we're closely monitoring. One other point that I would like to make is uh, the past four or five years, as we replace these vehicles and have to do less maintenance on them and less repairs, our maintenance costs go down in the operating budgets. So instead of using that money and spending it someplace else, what I've been actually trying to do is increase my allocations to the motor pool so that there's so that we can cover the, those future purchases and. Um, and and it, I mean, we can show data that, that replacing the fleet in a timely manner reduces those those expenses, maintenance expenses. Okay. Anything I have a question. Okay. Um, are these? Is this going to be paid for in cash, or are you doing that? Are you financing these two? These two would be cash. Anything further? Hearing none. Please take the roll. Yes. Councilmember Sipsik? No. Councilmember Shemansky? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Grabowski? No. Councilmember Martin Pontiac? Yes. Motion failed 3 4. Motion failed? Failed. Thank you. Moving on to the next consideration of approving an ex extended generator maintenance agreement with, with uh, Graham Electric Motor Service of Traverse City, Michigan to perform annual maintenance on city 16 generators. <clears throat> a, maintenance, a maintenance agreement with the city and with Graham Electric Motor Service to perform generator maintenance expired <clears throat> in 2019. The old agreement 
agreement cost was $4,619 per year to service 15 generators, or $307.93 per unit. The new extension agreement cost $4,862 per year to service 16 generators, or $303.88 per unit. Both agreements have a $300 per generator cost to do a load bank test. Unusually, three, three units are tested per year. Usually three units are tested per year. The number of units have increased to do adding a generator at Arthur Street Pump Station, but the cost per unit has gone down. At this time, Council will take action to approve the extension of the generator maintenance agreement with Ram Electric Motor Services for an additional three years is our motion. I'll make the motion. Second. I have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion or questions? Hearing none, please take the roll. Councilmember Cooper? Yes. Councilmember Beaton? Yes. Mayor Zielinski? Yes. Councilmember Sipsik? Yes. Councilmember Szymanski? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Grabowski? Yes. Councilmember Martin Pontiac? Yes. Motion approved. Thank you. <clears throat> Consideration of approval of the service agreement between the Downtown Development Authority and the Manistee Area Chamber of Commerce that allows the Chamber to serve as the DDA Executive Director. The Downtown Development Authority and the Manistee Area Chamber of Commerce have reached an agreement whereby the Chamber will serve as the DDA Executive Director for a three-year term. State law requires that the governing body of a municipality, in this case, the City Council, formally approve the DDA Director Service Agreement. At this time, Council can take action to approve the service agreement between the DDA and Chamber, whereby the Chamber will serve as a DDA Executive Director. Is there a motion? I'll make that motion. I'll second. I have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? Are they going to hire another person to do this? It looks like the salary is going to be $75,000 a year. How is this going to work? Mr. Taylor? That, that is up to the Chamber to decide how they're going to operate that. We're not, the, the DDA didn't enter an agreement for a person. It's just they're contracting with the Chamber to deliver those services. And, and the Chamber's going to have to figure out how they're going to have to, uh, what they're going to have to do to provide those services. They may hire someone else. Do we have anybody here from the Chamber? I would just like to see if they had a we could ask them that question. Mr. Taylor, you remember? No, I'm not. Oh. Oh, you're told, I'm sorry. That's okay. Um, well, yeah, I was just kind of wondering about that. I mean, looking at the duties that the former um, DDA directors have performed for the city, I know they didn't stay here very long, but they were very busy. So I'm just assuming that it's not something that would be easily absorbed. So I'm assuming they would hire another person. I think that's a correct assumption they have, but it's up to the chamber to deliver those services. And if, they, if they're going to have to hire somebody, they, they will. Otherwise, they won't be able to perform the terms of the agreement and the conditions of the agreement, and we go on. How much was the salary before? Can we know that? Of the? For the director? Um, I mean, I can't. I think it was, you know, in terms of benefits and everything, it was fifty-five or so thousand dollars. But the, the DDA had also realized that they that just the executive director was not sufficient staffing for the DDA, and they were anticipating hiring uh, a part-time person to help with it. So that's, you know, that was a thought in, in terms of coming up with that uh, price. Personally, personally, I think this is a great initiative. Uh, I know before I got on the council, I was always amazed that the DDA and the Chamber of Commerce could not collaborate on anything. And now we've come full circle. Uh, and I think this will really be a you know kind of a landmark decision for the city as far as moving forward. 
the chamber is going to be able to add uh, marketing uh, in a much more sophisticated way. Again, you had one person trying to do it all, and if they were spending all their time on an event, then they couldn't do anything for economic development or some of the other issues. So I, I really think that uh, in the long run, this will be uh, really good for the DDA and for the chamber. I, I think that the fact that they're going to be collaborating instead of competing uh, is going to be great for the city. And, and if I could just add to that, um, the chamber, it's been my uh, experience, they don't enter into two agreements to fail. So they're going to deliver. Uh, and the DDA has um, collaborated with the chamber on economic development. As, as the city and other partners, this is just another area that we can collaborate and become more efficient for our community. According to the contract, there is a performance evaluation written into the contract. This is during the first year of the contract, the designated subcommittee of the DDA will quarterly evaluate the contractor's performance to ensure performance meets expectations. And after two years, it'll be, a, it'll be an annual or biannual. I just think the DDA has got it pretty well covered to make sure that they receive what they need. I think the DDA had already um, contracted with the chamber for economic development. I can't remember how much they put in for that. Was it fifteen thousand? That escapes me at this time. But yeah, they they have contracted with the Chamber for Economic Development. So this would be a second partnership between the DDA and the Chamber. I do like the um, that they're working together. I yep. do appreciate that, but I would have liked to have seen some kind of um, presentation or something that here from the DDA and the um, Commerce to show us what they were planning, um, especially with the increase in salary. That's kind of disappointing that they didn't come. Anything else? Perry Dunn, please take the roll. Councilmember Mark Pontiac. Uh, yes. Mayor Pro Tem Grabowski. No. Councilmember Shemansky. Yes. Councilmember Sipsik. Yes. Mayor Zelinski. Yes. Councilmember Beaton. Yes. Councilmember Cooper. Yes. Motion approved. Thank you. Next is consideration of the local revenue sharing board grant applications. The local revenue sharing board distributes 2% money from the Little River Casino. The deadline for the 2020 cycle two applications is Friday, is Friday September 4th, 2020 at 5 p.m. City staff has prepared two grant applications for submitting to the LRSB. This agenda item will include two separate motions, one for each grant application. At this time, council could take action to authorize submission of a grant application to the local revenue sharing board for the police department ballistic armor vest and carriers in the amount of $9,001. Is there a motion? Motion. Second. I have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? How many vests does that purchase? That uh, purchases 12 vests and carriers. Thank you. Are we, so we're going to get two more police officers, right? Last week we offered a conditional offer of employment for the 12th officer and there's a plan to begin the process in hiring a 13th officer. So yes, so I, I get, had desire to more officers. Shouldn't we get more vests to cover those officers? So I thought about asking for 13 vests. The only thing that was a drawback is if we are getting those grant funds and I'm not sure when that 13th officer is actually going to be hired, if we have unexpended funds in the grant, I don't want that to have a negative impact on the next cycle. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So if, if, again, we have a plan in place to hire the 13th officer, 
but pre-employment uh, conditions, backgrounds, we don't know exactly when it's going to happen. So I'd hate to have that unexpended funds have a negative impact on future requests. Okay. If the grant is denied or you don't get approval for the grant, we do have money in the budget for these vests? There was money budgeted for, yes. Okay. Anybody else? Hearing none, please take the roll. Councilmember Cooper? Yes. Councilmember Beaton? Yes. Mayor Zielinski? Yes. Councilmember Sipsek? Yes. Councilmember Shemansky? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Grabowski? Yes. Councilmember Martin Pontiac? Yes. Motion approved. Thank you. At this time, Council could take action to authorize submission of a grant application to the Local Revenue Sharing Board for the Fire Department, Fire Helmets, and Structural Fire Fighting Boots in the amount of $8,320. Is motion. there a motion? Motion. I'll second. Any discussion or questions? Is there somebody here from the fire? I can't see out there. Just want to pass it on. The collaboration that you have with the other departments um, is a very good thing. It, uh, it helps us utilize our finances and our expenditures and um, working together. Is, that collaboration is a really good thing. Thank you for doing all of that. With that, is there anybody else? Hearing none, please take the roll. Councilmember Martin Pontiac. Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Grabowski? Yes. Councilmember Schmansky? Yes. Councilmember Sipsek? Yes. Mayor Zielinski? Yes. Councilmember Beaton? Yes. Councilmember Cooper? Yes. Motion approved. Thank you. Concerns and comments? This is an opportunity for citizens to comment on municipal services, activities, or areas of city involvement. Citizens in attendance shall be recognized by the mayor for comments. Limited to five minutes. Letters submitted to council will not be publicly read. Do we have any citizens that would like to express a concern or a comment? Please state your name and address. Ryan Fitzsimmons, 209 St. Mary's Parkway. Um, I just wanted to touch on, um, um, we have our shop open in, in Lowell and uh, Last month, the fire department came to us. We've had a really nice relationship with the city there. And uh, they requested that, um, that they needed a, a new rescue boat for the fire department. Uh, so last month, we bought the, the city uh, a, a rescue boat, a brand new rescue boat that they could use. Um, because the, the last one was, I don't know, 20 plus years old. It was rusted out and they were having issues. Um, we as uh, operators, not only uh, of uh, marijuana businesses, um, but we're entrepreneurs that started off um, in many other ventures, and we really care about giving back to the cities that we operate in um, and working with you guys. And um, uh, things like the, the DPW not being able to get the trucks and things they, they need, this is something we would love to help out with um, in the future. And um, uh, you know, please don't hesitate to call me if, um, I think my contact information is available on that letter. Um, and if not, uh, I'll give my cell phone to, to any of you guys. And I was just speaking with Michael, and we'd love to find a way to, to help moving forward. I know that we're looking to potentially um, um, secure about uh, 10 licenses between um, the retail space and the dispensary and the, the, the grow project that we have over on 170 Lachesky. Um, between just the two stores that we have right now, uh, we've got a number uh, of others in the works, but we generate um, hundreds of thousands of dollars each month that we're paying into the state. The more licenses that the city gives out, the larger break in that state pool that the city will receive um, from the state of Michigan, from the excise tax. Um, uh, additionally, uh, as uh, I represent the, the ownership group, um, we are all interested in bringing, uh, I know I currently own three properties in, uh, in Manistee. We all <coughs> look to invest and bring our other businesses um, with us as well uh, when we come to operate um, uh, in the cities. And uh, I know that we can help generate um, more property tax dollars and 
for the city in general, so there's, there's not this cyclical uh, cycle where things tend to be short um, or dealing with COVID. And so uh, we'd like to have a, a real good working uh, partnership with the city and please feel free to reach out to any of us or especially me and uh, again, I'll be available after the meeting and uh, I can get out uh, my cards or my cell phone to, to any of you guys um, or any of the, the city staff. So I appreciate it. Thank you. Is there anybody else? I can't hardly see out there, but I don't, I don't think I see any movement. Okay, with that, we'll move on to officials and staff. Mr. Taylor? Uh, nothing at this time. Mr. Sales? Nothing, Honor. Thank you. City Clerk? Nothing, Honor. Thank you. Fire Department? Do you have anything? No, sir. How about Police Chief? I don't have anything. Finance Director? Nothing, Honor. DPW? Nothing. Nothing, sir. Thank you. Engineer? Nothing, Your Honor. Thank you. Thank you. Martin Donyak, Council Member. Yeah, how are um, staffing going with the fire department with the new, um, with us being down firefighters? Um, right now our staff as you guys know, half of them are out of isolation through approximately the 28th of this month. Uh, there's four of us left. Uh, we're working two on, two off. Um, so far, we've been able to be successful. Uh, we're providing all the same services that we provided prior to these guys getting the exposure that they had. Um, the four of us that are here, we uh, are doing the best we can. We're keeping up with our end of the deal and keeping up with our daily activities and requirements as well. Your dedication is much appreciated. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. I got a question for you. Yes, sir. Did you order a new ambulance? Is that what they said the earlier thing? Uh, no, sir. The ambulance project is currently out in the request for bid stage. I believe those uh, requests for bids are due back uh, by uh, 5 p.m. August 31. And then uh, those will be opened and I believe presented to um, you folks uh, September 15th, I believe. Okay, thank you. Yes, sir. And then I just have one more thing. Um, I just keep going back to when we were doing the budget um, and we were talking about, um, I'm all set with Yes, sir. Um, that we were talking about hiring um, more police officers. And I know um, Kula had come up and said that even though when we add um, more money to one department, his department always gets taken money taken from his. And so I, took that in consideration when we were talking about the trucks. And I feel that was kind of unfair what we did. So just want to throw that out there. I do feel that we always cut his department. In the past, we've done that a lot. So just my feeling. Mayor Pro Tem, okay. uh, Dad, when is this new uh, officer going to start at the police department? I'll uh, defer to Chief Glass. He has a timetable. So last Monday, we offered a conditional offer of employment. Um, from that point, what happens is we do a thorough vetting process or background investigation. Uh, my background investigator says it's going to take no less than 30 days to make sure we do a thorough job. And then from there, it's a psychological testing and uh, medical testing. So approximately six weeks from when that person actually begins the field training officer program. That's an approximation. Sometimes if the background isn't that, if there's not much there, it can go a little faster. If there are some bumps, it could be a little longer. We'll make sure we don't cut any corners. And everything we do in the pre-employment process is consistent with best practices in the profession. So we're looking at right about six weeks to get that person in the patrol car on field training. Oh, do we have a second man being booked at? Bring it up to 13. There wasn't a second person in this last candidate pool. My plan is as soon as this number 12 passes all the pre-employment standards, I'm going to post for the 13th officer and get that going as soon as we can to get that person through the process and get them on board. That's my plan. Okay. How, how are we doing with the blight program? I think the blight program is going very well. Uh, we're seeing improvement. 
sergeants are monitoring it. Although I drove past first sheet today, there's more mattresses out there. They, they took care of the other mattresses, but uh, the key for us when we measure success is we're seeing improvement um, in, in the blight areas. So, I just have one more thing, sorry. Um, and did I hear that you promoted uh, an officer as a detective? We haven't yet. So the timetable for promotions, we have four candidates currently. And according to the collective bargaining, there's a written test and an oral board. And the estimated time to have that person officially promoted looks like right about October, we should have a permanent detective sergeant position. Okay. So that's our timetable internally. Um, the offer has been extended to the 12th. I'm sorry, no, this is your turn. So, okay. What? Or, or Jim's turn. Anything else? Did he the accept the, the, the job? Yeah. He, he did. It, okay. it depends, you know, the background of medical testing psychological. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Dad, what do we do with those, that store downtown? Do we ever get notice from the state? Uh, do they have an extension on their, their work? Because I think they're working on the Larson store. The man and his wife working down there. We ain't got the other store done yet. They do. Uh, we got uh, the city attorney issued a free freedom of information a request to the state. Got back verification that they do have a valid building permit. Um, so, uh, we I furnished that information to Safe Build. Uh, they take exception to it. They didn't think that the state has standing. Uh, and so uh, Safe Built is working with uh, Senator Vanderwall's office on trying to get some relief from the state in terms of continually issuing building permits and trade permits in the city when they don't have any jurisdiction. So uh, that situation first came to light with the uh, work that was going on at the uh, Community College building downtown. We found a couple of other examples in town, and so uh, it's contrary to state law, and we're, we're working on it. But the instant question of whether they have a valid permit at those buildings, they do, issued by the state. And so we have to let that play out. Thank you. Anything else? Councilmember Spensky. Uh, Mr. Taylor, when do you think we could see the, uh, uh, the motion to allow uh, medical marijuana facilities to obtain a recreational uh, license of, in addition or, or above the current limits? Well, tomorrow afternoon staff is meeting uh, to discuss that very topic. You know, we've got to, I'll have a better idea at the end of the meeting because and council was, was interested in those that are, I think the terminology is already in the pipeline um, to give consideration. We're gonna provide some additional options in case council wants to consider it. You know, we, we wanna have it if we can turn it around by the first meeting in September, if not the second meeting in September. Thank you. Anything else? Council member Cooper. Council member B. I have nothing. Thank you. Council Member Sister. I have nothing. I have nothing. With that, um, consideration of the closed session, union contract negotiations. Um, before I go into the motion, um, we're going to have the closed session here, so we would like some cooperation. If we'd be able to have to clear this area, um, you're welcome to wait. Um, there'll be no action taken after the meeting except adjournment. After the closed session, we'll have no, no actions. Um, so, with that being said, City Manager Tad Taylor has requested a closed session this evening as permitted under Michigan Open Meetings Act Section 8C to discuss contract negotiations with the United Steel Workers. At this time, Council could take action to proceed to a closed session under Section 8C of the Michigan Open Meetings Act. Is there a motion? I'll make the motion. I'll second. Have a motion and a second. Any comments? Discussion? Hearing none, please take the roll. Councilmember Cooper? Yes. Councilmember Beaton? Yes. Mayor Zelensky? Yes. Councilmember Sipset? Yes. Councilmember Shemansky? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Grabowski? Yes. Councilmember Martin Pontiac? Yes. Motion approved. Thank you. With that, we're going to go into closed session. Thank everybody for coming and speaking. We appreciate it.
Have a great evening.